And I was going to ask you right off the bat if you were a lifelong resident or not. Yep, I yeah. sure was. I okay. Was born at 14 Marshall. Uh-huh. When was that? 1914. Mm-hmm. In May. And how many were in your family? Six kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you all went to school here? All went through school here. Yeah. Which which school was that now? Was that? I went to the brick schoolhouse on uh, where the town hall is now. Mm-hmm. Went through there to sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Then went up to the what was then the new high school on Bloomingdale. Yeah, what year was that that they put that new school in? I, I think can't it was twenty six. I think mm -hmm. started in there. Mm -hmm. And then I got typhoid and I was out for three four months. That must have been a pretty bad thing. Was... Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, it was. A, I lost a lot of people there. Not all old people either. A lot of them are young people. Was that when they decided to? Put the reservoir mm -hmm. in over at Bennington? That, the sewers, mm -hmm. both at mm -hmm. the same time. Who's uh, responsible for that? Or? Well, that, I don't remember who was uh, who was on the village board then or who was mayor even. Mm -hmm. Well, I see, I was only 10, 12 years, 10 or 11 years old. I didn't know that old. I see, at 14, about 12 years old, and I wasn't paying much attention to who was running for office at sure. that time. Sure, who would? <laughs> <laughs> but um, was anybody else in the family had typhoid? My, then? Yeah, my mother and my brother both had it. All, oh, all three of us at the same time. Oui, hey. My sister was training for a nurse at the general hospital, and she came home and took care of us. Mm. And they had old Doc Howie, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the doctor. And then there was a, the state sent in doctors, nurses. They used to come see us all the time. I remember one of them was... Quite a heavy gal, and her name was McKenna. She was a peach of a gal, all just the same. Mm -hmm. She was a good nurse. I wondered if, uh, uh, you know, different areas in, uh, got a hit worse or less. No, or it seemed to be pretty general. Pretty, yeah. I don't know. What I always had an idea it came from the water mm -hmm. because uh, the water was pumped out of these wells down here by the creek mm -hmm. of course they had no sewers yeah right and uh, <laughs> stop sure. right into the sewers right, right into the creek or whatever yeah well like do now only, only, only now they uh uh yeah. they clean it up yeah yeah you know, yeah but, what i mean it they weren't sanitary sewers right <laughs> right right <laughs> and i always laid it to that i don't know i'm no authority on that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. well, i always I, figured that's what started that's usually what uh what does start at the uh, unsanitary conditions. and of course at that time too uh pasteurized milk was wasn't heard of around mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. okay now we'll go on a little further you graduated yep. in 33 in 33 mm -hmm. and then what happened as far as your you know your personal life oh well 33, well, you couldn't buy a job, say nothing to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. And we just knocked around just wherever we could and mm -hmm. pick up a buck here and there once mm -hmm. in a while. And yeah, I was going to ask you about the Depression yeah, in town. Yeah, it was you know, rough. It, it was I rough. It was rough. We didn't have things like they have today, you know, mm -hmm. like the unemployment insurance or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, the kids have no conception of what uh, no. that would have been like. I uh, did have, then Franklin D. come along, and he uh, instituted the different things like the CCCs and the WPA and stuff like that, and it helped. It helped like mad, because I remember I, I worked on the WPA for a month. They got me on that. I would make... You could only work three days a week. Mm -hmm. You made five hours a day. Mm -hmm. And worked up here in the county park, which was then supposed to be a Akron park. But mm -hmm. it, after they had the dam already in, and they had uh, Parkview Drive was in there then. It was in already. It was in uh, when I when I worked up there. I, I and we gonna... we were working on the road that goes up through the park. Oh, yeah, okay. Up by that spring, that's mm -hmm. where I, I was working on. Cold, oh my gosh, it was cold. It was <laughs> right in the middle of winter. 
and they had me for a water boy, the worst job in the place. All you did was, <laughs> they didn't want much water, so you stood around and froze. Sure. <laughs> and you didn't work because you weren't supposed to. And in the summertime, you run your legs off for getting water. Is it mostly local uh, people that... Uh, mostly all people that, from yeah. Moosehead here. And mm. Then they shut that park down. Maynard Jackson was the foreman, was a guy that was superintendent, I guess you'd call him. Mm. And then they shut the thing down. They just let it go from there because it shut the program down, I guess. And so it was to it. What what year was, uh, was that about? It, uh, oh, it must have been about... 35 or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I did get, I started working at a gas station here and finally wound up got a, a day or so a week, mm -hmm. dollar a day. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and uh, oh, it kept things going. Kept me going, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, I got a job for $9 a week working for Pete Ass. <laughs> I know you'd work for Pete. Yeah, five years I worked for Pete. Yeah. Uh, when did he When did he start there? Gee, I don't know what time Pete started there because George Campbell was in there first, and it was a shell station mm -hmm. when they first opened. It. Before that, well, there was a big house there, and uh, I can't think of the guy's name that that lived in it. But anyhow, they tore it down, and built this. Uh, shell station. Gosh, I was going to say there must have been, if there was a big house in that corner, then the uh, one that the other one right behind it must not have been there. Where uh, El Troll lived? No, not El Troll. The, the newspaper man Schultz. Is that well, yeah, he uh, his daughter lives there now, Millie Millie right. Lott. But that, that house, if there was oh, a big that house, house there, was there too. Oh, it was. Oh yeah. Oh. Hmm. Well, it wasn't that particular house. I think I think they either that or they. Remodeled it like mad mm. because there was. I remember there was when I peddled papers in the morning, there used to be a house there, and I used to well, that was under my papers. And mm. It was up on the hill like that, and, and I used to throw it up on the porch. Mm. That uh, it didn't look like it does now. Mm -hmm. Must have built or rebuilt that house or something. Yeah, and then they had this other house on the corner there. But, and then I, had, of course, the war came along, and I went to Buffalo Arms. Mm -hmm. And after that, well, I went to several different plants around, and wound up at Perry's. Oh, now, were you married before you went to Perry's? Uh, or was that? Oh, like yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Perry's in '52. I married in '44. Mm -hmm. When well, they. Uh, well, I worked at different plants in Buffalo, and I always had to look for somewhere to ride because it, sure. I couldn't drive. Sure. So, yeah. And uh, so I figured I'd stay with Perry's. I, it had it cost me probably twenty five or thirty dollars a week. I could take that much less and still stay right at home. Why, sure, sure. So I ride around, and spend an hour going to work and back every day. That makes a lot of sense. So. That was a pretty small operation then in comparison to today. Oh, I guess it was. <laughs> Everything was by hand, practically. <laughs> how, how many people worked there at the time when you started? Oh, probably 25, 30. It was the most. Mm -hmm. In the summertime, they'd get on a little extra help. How many? They didn't they had, have... only had about five delivery trucks. I was going to say. And it was all local. They weren't didn't uh, go out. I mean, other than the well, surrounding area. Well, they were area. going into Buffalo. Oh, they were? Yeah, oh, yeah. They had a place in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. They had an office there in Buffalo. And they were just starting to expand more. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, like you see, everything was done by hand then. It seemed like it compared to today. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Compared to today. I made the ice cream mix. If we made a... A thousand gallons of mix in a day, we had an awful big day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and nothing compared to today. I don't know what they're making today, but when I left there, I was making eight thousand a day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> they, I know that someone said somewhere along the line that uh, when they'd have sales meetings, 
that Milo Perry could always tell his chocolate from any other brand. I don't know. There's a taste. Huh. All the other, of all the ice creams, he could always tell. Pick out his. He could pick out his. I know Art Lardo uh, mentioned that to me several times. No, I didn't he know that. He had sales meetings. He said he didn't know how he did it, but he, said he could do it. I know they were always checking their samples on mm-hmm. different companies and mm-hmm. comparing them to theirs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Art Lauder is the one that uh, broke me in on it. Yeah. And then he went, well, I helped him for a year or quite a while. And then uh, he ran, went to run a store, a ball store down on Bloomingdale Avenue. Mm-hmm. Down Bloomingdale there for a year or two, and then he came back to Paris. Mm-hmm. I know, uh, uh, let's see, Heller's had a dairy. It was yeah. that a small operation, I imagine? Yeah. yeah. And they were in the coal, too, were they? Yeah, yeah. they had coal, ice, mm-hmm. and dairy products. That's all I know of. I was a, I'd heard that one of the, the big things that got Perry's going was a contract with the school. That started him on the ice cream bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had the milk business before that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'd heard... There too about him making something in uh, Lockport. Made candy, I guess it was. Broom. He was his trade was a, a broom maker. Oh, and he used mm. to make brooms, these corn brooms, and regular, you know, old time brooms. Mm-hmm. He did that in Lockport. Yeah, yeah. Down on, uh, I used to know the name of the street too, because I worked at Harrison's one time during the war, and they they had other buildings other than their own plants where they were making stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of them was the building that had that broom factory in it. Hmm. Jefferson Union, they used to call it, the building. There. So hmm. that's all I can tell you about it. But we had, it was all cleaned out when I got in there. Yeah. We was just getting out the small junk in there. Well, he, he must have started this almost, uh, he and his son uh, started the, the operation here. He and Marlon? Oh, the, the ice cream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when they when he first came here, that, that oh, was when he milk. came there in 1918. Mm-hmm. It was just milk. He I bought see. it out. It mm-hmm. wasn't going. I guess evidently it was a going business because he bought it. Mm-hmm. And then after a few months, Perry Blackmore started to work for him, mm-hmm. and they those two ran it for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Perry used to peddle milk. Mm-hmm. I remember the horse and button wagon. What's the guy said? And Perry told me, he says, after two weeks on the route, that horse knew the route as good as he did. <laughs> I'd, I'd seen that happen quite often where yeah. you'd see the horses go along and stop, knew when to yeah. stop, knew when to start, yeah. know how long it took between yeah. for the fellow to go in. And we used to, I, I can remember when we were kids, we, my folks would buy a, a card of tickets, say one quart of milk on each ticket. Mm-hmm. Instead of putting change out, putting money out, you put the quart, the, the ticket out in, in the milk bottle and they'd pick it up and leave it. Your milk. Mm-hmm. I remember they used to have the cards. Of course, he used to have cards similar to that for, for bread, wasn't it? For the, yeah. for the uh, Hall's Bakery. Yeah. Hall's Bakery, you put, yeah. You put the card in the window. And yeah, you put the card in the window and mm-hmm. they stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, then Marlow came along, got interested in the dairy business, and he, he went to school down in Cornell. When he came back, why well, then that's when they started making the, uh, came home, I guess he came home on vacation or something, or summer, and they started making ice cream. This is a school wanted to make ice cream, try it. Well, in fact, uh, Mrs. Perry's sister mm-hmm. was running the cafeteria at the time. Oh. This is Miss Blackmore. Mm-hmm. And, uh, geez, I guess it started taking off. He was making it in a, Old hand crank machine, <laughs> and then it just kept going and going and going, and expanding. It's the only way it's gone. Exactly. Yeah. When I was a kid, we used to go down there and uh, with Marlow. We used to go in the building, and they had a, a a tank made out of concrete blocks, mm-hmm. and it hold just so much water, and that's where they used to keep the milk cool. Hmm. And that thing. So they kept it cold. They put ice in it, a box of ice in it. The farmers used to bring your milk there? No, uh, no, no, no. Well, Perry said, Perry Blackmore told me they used to have to go out and get the milk from the farmers. Oh. 
They had an old Model T, and they took the back seat out of it and built a wooden platform in there, and one would go out and collect the milk, and the other one would be washing bottles all by hand and everything, getting ready for the bottle. And then uh, late in the afternoon, they'd bottle it. And the next morning, one guy would pedal, and the other guy would be cleaning bottles and washing bottles and stuff like that, and and uh, going out and picking up the milk, bringing it in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said it was a... It was work. <laughs> well, I can imagine it was work. You know, gosh, especially seven days a week too, and oh. I don't know five days stuff. Mm-hmm. They pedal milk seven days a week. Yeah, yeah I know. <clears throat> the um, uh, well, let's see. When would was the, did they get into the city? When Mort? I know he was in the city most of the time. Yeah, that he was in the city before I started work there. I see. Yeah. Well, I can remember too in some of the. Young kids that saw out of school used to work for them, and they would pedal the milk, and then with pickup trucks. Mm-hmm. And then they'd come back after they got through pedal milk, and they'd slide a a body on these uh, pickup trucks mm-hmm. that was all insulated and had slugs in it, uh, frozen slugs, mm-hmm. or brine in the tin things. So it would be ice. It would be cold in there. Almost like dry ice. Yeah, it only it was. Uh, well, there was a uh, brine inside mm-hmm. of it, and they'd freeze that in the hardening room. Mm-hmm. They had a small hardening room. And they, then they'd pedal ice cream mm-hmm. in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. They'd go to they'd have an ice cream over at the, uh, I remember one time I went with them in the Owen Batavia Fair. They'd have a booth with ice cream in it. Mm-hmm. Gee, they'd have to wait till that one, two o'clock in the morning before they could uh, come back. Mm hmm. <laughs> didn't get up and pedal milk in the morning. <laughs> that was high school kid, you know, yeah, I was just out yeah. of high school. Mm-hmm. God. So, so that was rough. That was quite an operation you had down there. It sure was. And he had some of the nicest grapes in his backyard. Only we used to have to go down there at night and help ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we had grapes right at our home. But they yeah. weren't as good as his. Well, no, they never are. They never, yeah. I remember you telling me once, speaking of making uh, ice cream, about a Christmas list that you had to make some Christmas ice cream for a fella in Christmas time with some alcoholic beverage in it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, rum raisin. Mm-hmm. And he went to get the rum, and the rum was all gone. <laughs> Somebody got into the rum. It wasn't me. I never knew about it. <laughs> no, you, you said you had to go uptown and, and buy the rum. Well, or somebody that, did. Somebody had to go up and get it because mm-hmm. they had. Uh, I don't know. Um, they really probably shouldn't have done it, but uh, that's yeah. what they used the real rum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're supposed to use imitation for because right. that was an alcoholic beverage. Either. Right, right. Well, this this was a special order for a. a Christmas or something? Yeah, it must have been. Because mm-hmm. that was before my time. I was told about that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, that was before my time. But I can do remember Mr. Perry coming home from Buffalo. With his whole trunk would be full of bananas. Mm-hmm. And we'd spend the next morning pe- uh, for a couple hours peeling bananas before so I could make banana ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Usually was to say there was quite a few of them and didn't get into the ice cream. Well, I, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah. They had some great times down there. A lot of work, though. Oh, I could imagine. It was a lot of work. Yeah. And like you say, you know, uh, the operation has changed, you know, so much. Oh, so much. Uh, Why, before they had liquid sugar, we used to have to take those 100-pound bags, put them on your shoulder, and sift it into the mix so wouldn't lump. Mm. Yeah, that, that's work. That that tank was was probably five and a half feet high. How long? Had, did, how long did it take you to pour the sugar in? Oh, yeah. it would take a couple minutes. So, but you mm-hmm. couldn't just take and dump it in. Sure, it would be all lumps. How many? How many have to put into a batch? Well, depending on what you were making. Now, we used to have to make popsicle mix. Mm-hmm. Oh, it'd probably be eight or ten of those. Go into it. Yeah. And then that, because it, it was just sugar and water and and stabilizers in it. And then 
Then they took it out in the what it was the freezer room, and then they added more stuff to mm -hmm. it, the flavoring, the coloring, and all that stuff. In it. Did I know that uh, later on? Of course, they made some uh, quite a variety of ice creams, but uh, didn't they at one time have a? It just had a top of the line uh, ice cream. They didn't have as they have now, for example, Perry oh. Sprite and everything else. But did well, they make they a had, real rich? They had. They had uh, Three types of ice cream they had, what they called Hostess Pack, and then Perry's, and Perry's Deluxe. That mm -hmm. was it. Mm -hmm. Deluxe were in round containers, and the Perry's and the, and the uh, regular was in the square containers, and so was the Hostess Pack. I know that uh, it was quite an operation. Uh, I was going to ask you too about just individuals about Peg Campbell. Yeah, he lived right across the street from me. Mm -hmm. well, almost. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a boyhood accident, I assume, with him, with his leg. Seven years old. Yeah. He was running on top of a freight car on the railroad, and the train hooked on it and knocked him off and cut his leg off. I know probably a lot of people don't realize uh, how. Bristol, the fellow was because. Oh boy, I guess not. He well, sure was. He, how long did he drive school bus? Oh gosh, a good many years he drove it. And a bigger bus than they'll allow on the road today. Mm -hmm. And he'd take that bus any place. The more kids in it, the better he liked it. And see, he lost his left leg, was it? No, his right leg. Right leg. Yeah, which made right. it made it that much tougher for a, yeah. a bus driver. Yeah. Just well, he'd, he'd take a piece of steel and fasten it onto the brake pedal and cover just half of the clutch pedal. He had his clutch adjusted just so that when he pushed on the brakes, it would throw it out of gear, too. Mm -hmm. Or else he could just use the clutch. And, without, and uh, of course, he had to use the hand gas and shift, and a lot of times he just let it roar and shift it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never recall of him ever being in an accident. I don't need. I can. I can recall him uh, driving the bus. Yeah, I've ridden on the bus with him. Yeah, and big old Brockway. Big old Brockway, right? Yeah, because at one time there were only two buses up there. Yeah, you know where the big drove. Yeah, up. and then uh, I can remember Peg coming home. He worked for Mister Sutton up there for years and years and years. He, he was a uh, the first Mrs. Sutton's chauffeur, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in fact, Edwin Sutton's grandmother, mm -hmm. Peg was the uh, chauffeur for her, mm -hmm. and then she died, and uh, Mr. Sutton kept him working just the same out on the farm. He'd work right along with anybody else, pitch hay, everything else, drive tractors and everything. But he, he, did he use a crutch then, or did he have Oh, a, yeah. All, all the time. Right. Yeah. He never had a uh, artificial leg. He tried an artificial leg, couldn't stand it. I see. Yeah. And, uh, but he could swim like a fish with one leg. And then, uh, why they told me, I didn't never, I never saw him do it, but they said he used to roller skate and ice skate. Right along with the rest of the kids. I knew he could dance. I knew that. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, he could go downstairs while I, he'd go down the whole flight of stairs while I was just thinking about it. <laughs> Take about six steps at a time. You were like a, and then he had a, there was, Fairly high railing on his front porch. Mm -hmm. He'd come down and push, push down the vault right over the top of it instead of walking up around to the steps. He had one of those Chrysler airflows, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was his sister's first oh, thing, he, and then he got it. Mm -hmm. yeah, she died, and he got it. Mm -hmm. That was a big car. It's true. I can recall it. Yeah. How long did he work for Sutton's? Oh, gosh. He was working ever since I knew him up until the time he went to school. I forgot just what year it was. But it was a long, long time, I know. Was that all he did, you know, at, after he started driving bus? Did he I, do something else? No. Just drove bus. Oh, he worked in the, the janitor, too. Mm. He was a janitor and bus driver. He was in Sam Stuckey's time. Yeah. Al yeah, well, Weatherby and Sam Stuckey and mm -hmm. him and, and oh, oh, uh, Holtz. Was, yeah, it was a, an old Italian fellow that worked up there as a janitor, too. I was trying to have a heavy set fellow. I can't remember his name. I can't Save think who it was. Uh, oh, spoke very, huh? Spoke very little. You know, oh. he's a very quiet man. 
And, uh, well, there's Mary Clausen, too. I don't know if you remember her. Mm -hmm. She was a janitor up there at the farm. And, boy, I'm telling you, when she said frack, you better jump. <laughs> she was a little woman, but, boy, she, when she spoke, she meant what she said. <laughs> there was no, no questions about it. <laughs> and I imagine that the teachers and the, the faculty, even then, were a good deal different than they are today. Oh, yeah. Was uh, Gertrude uh, there when, she wasn't there when you went to school. Who? Gertrude uh, Leopold. Oh, yes. She, she was. Yeah, I took biology off of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then she became principal. She was a stern woman. Yeah, that that's fair. Yeah. She, uh, she didn't have to use force or anything. She'd make you feel small just by talking to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't fail her grades. Mm -hmm. Nobody failed her. <laughs> <laughs> But you knew it when it was done. Yeah. When you got done time for reasons, you knew what was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. There was no question about that. She I'm, was an excellent teacher. Yeah. I. Uh, well, of course, she was principal, and I was in yeah. school. So, but I I know that. Uh, and you didn't go go into the Johns and horse around because you never knew when she was going to come in there, or you mm -hmm. never knew when Mary Clausen was going to come in there because, I mean, she would. And you never saw anything written on the walls? No. Well, it was an entirely different uh, lifestyle then, of course. Yeah, that's right. As we that's have right. today. Yeah. And it was a, a smaller school, naturally. But... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Was... And uh, when I was a little kid, of course, there wasn't any park up here at all then. It was just a gully, open gully, right up to And uh, we used to play down there all the time. Now, the, when did the lake go in, Park View? Oh, that one in the... When they built the bridge? That was the WPA project. Mm -hmm. And around the early 30s, very early. must have been, oh, 1930 or something right along there. Because I can remember after school, the lake was there. And we used to skate all day long down there. Because we couldn't find jobs. So mm -hmm. we'd go down there and skate. At, at one time, that, uh, Park View was a different... Uh, it was named differently, wasn't it? From John Street up. It was oh, yeah. Name. Yeah, it was... Uh, mm -hmm. Albert Street, mm -hmm. from John from John to Main. East Avenue. To, that's right, because there was no... There wasn't any Parkview Drive right, then. Right. There was just a road that went down through there. Uh, well, I, I guess they must have used it when they had the cement kilns and stuff up there. That way. Because uh, we used to slide downhill there. I said, I think, just like Mount Vinhoodenburg. <laughs> Boy, you go with bobsleds. Mm -hmm. Then there was an old mill race down there. We used to, there was like a tunnel. Mm -hmm. And we, back in a ways, there was a hole in the ceiling where a few stones had fallen out. We'd build a fire under there, and then the smoke would go up through that hole, and we used to keep warm in there. Get warm in there. There's one last, it was similar to, one similar up behind Bitterman's, wasn't there? Uh, over by the bridge, there was a, for a long time. Oh, I guess there was hole. one. Man. Yeah. yeah. There was a hole. They filled it in. Yeah. Because that yeah. was, I could see yeah, that. That was where the mine, key, mine shaft, I guess mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Another one I was going to mention was, uh, well, of course, we did talk about Pete Hess, but Tucker. Tucker. Uh, oh, Bill yeah. Tucker. Yeah. 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 He was, did he have family? Why, well, I, the story I heard about him was that up here at the sanitarium where they had the black water baths or whatever mm -hmm. it was up there, where they got apartments up there now, mm -hmm. and that he was a patient from there and he stayed here. Mm -hmm. He used to work for a guy by the name of George Dorsch. Mm -hmm. He had a trucking outfit and he, because he had uh, raised muskmelons and vegetables and stuff like that up uh, off of Jackson Street there. Tuck used to take care of that. He used to work up in there. Yep. Kept, <coughs> kept him going. I was going to ask you, too, about the... Uh, I know one time we had a number of fire companies here. Yeah, there was quite a few of them, I guess. And they were... And one of them was Cement City. I remember they had that one. They had a cataract hose company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liberty Hose Company, that was the one that, that turned into be Akron Fire Company. Because mm -hmm. I remember my older brother, my oldest brother Albert, 
was in uh, Liberty Holes. They had a basketball team. They, had a, uh, was, they played after they got out of high school. Mm -hmm. Town team called the Liberty Holes Company. They were pretty good. And uh, for at that time, for the facilities they had to play in, and then uh, they used to have to. But didn't they play basketball in the, the old Park Theater? Yeah. Is that because they didn't have a, didn't have any gym before they built the, the new school? Was, yeah. They had to, when they wanted to practice, they had to take the seats all out of it. They had folding seats, and they'd take those all out of it and fold them, stand them up. Then they'd practice, and then before the, after they got through practice, they would set them all up again so they'd be ready for the movies that night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, the only way they could eat it, they had big pot-bellied stoves in the corner. All the people would all stand around us so the guys wouldn't fly into them and get burned. <laughs> well, then they played played their games in the afternoons then. No, they played they, them in the... Well, and then, then, well, the movies were, weren't on every night. They oh, were I only see. on Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Saturdays or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they'd play other nights. I and, see. Uh, that, Why well, you could stand at one end and shoot to the other end. That's, that's all. Well, you can see how white it is now. Sure, sure. <laughs> that's been a small court. And there was a, a balcony on one end, so that shortened it up that right, much more. Right, <laughs> I I had never seen it, you know. Uh, yeah, well, I went, a, went to a, a lot court. of games down there. Yeah, I knew that they played there, but I had, yeah. I'd never seen the this, uh, yeah. the court yeah, itself. I, I got some pictures of it. Well, that was in 20, 21, 22, along in there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I got some pictures of guys that played there. My brother, Hap Sutton, mm -hmm. and Bob Bell, Fran Stein, Charlie Stein, Leo Waterstraw, Willie Swift, uh, Eddie Shepard. Then there was a, the mascot was uh, Tommy Thomas. Mm -hmm. He was just a short, real short young kid. Mm -hmm. He was their mascot. <laughs> did they uh, uh, were they in the league then or was just why I guess so and I know the leagues that, that... I don't know I, could, uh, I remember they did beat a couple of high schools in Buffalo mm -hmm. I I looked into some of the older yearbooks and they they did have a kind of a varied schedule and yeah. they did play a lot of city schools yeah uh, technical high school mm -hmm. I remember they beat them mm -hmm. not on a home and home basis but they did play them yeah and I wondered then how, how many, if there was a league then or not. On that, I, I yeah. can't tell you. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. Well, I, I don't know either. I was so. rather young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I do remember some things. They used to have a stage at, at one end of the theater. And we all used to sit up on that. Mm -hmm. The kids would holler and yell like mad. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time we were talking about red lights in town. Or, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, and... I don't know if we ever really clarified where they all were. Well, there was one at the corner of John and Clinton. Mm -hmm. And then there was one at the corner of Maine, and what is now part of you, right by the Octagon mm -hmm. House. And then there's one, they tried to work them down there at uh, where well, the flower garden is at Bloomingdale there. Mm -hmm. But that was a rather difficult thing. I'd yeah. seen a picture of that one. Yeah. Uh, Walt Sutton had a picture of that, of the light. Yeah. It was in the wintertime. Just to prove that there actually was a light there at one there time. There was. There wasn't any flower gardener there, though. They just took your chances. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but that's the only three I can remember. Was there one? I don't know. Was there ever one at the Five Corners? Five Corners? I, I, I think don't know. So. I don't know. So I, There used to be one at, the, at Marie's Corners. Mm-hmm. Stop go right there then. Mm -hmm. you know. And they did away with that one. They did away with that one. That would be, well, Critton in Maine, right? Yeah, yeah. Critton in Maine. Call it Murray's mm -hmm. Corners. Right, then. I know a lot of people, when, and as you say, when you speak of Murray's Corners, they, they know say, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, no. uh -huh. So I thought maybe we ought to clarify. There's a lot that. of bad accidents up there. Well, there still are today. Yeah, it's on it's, it's a It's a crime. I, I wondered. I, can't, I never could understand it. Why they took uh, so many of the lights down? Yeah, I I had heard there again. I don't know that they took the lights down in the village because they felt they weren't needed anymore. Yeah, and probably so. That's probably so. I mean, yeah. it, 
I years ago, you know, we're talking probably 50 years or better. There probably was a lot more activity in town. Yeah. Maybe not. No, there wasn't any more. There wasn't as much traffic, but uh, people didn't have the cars they got today. They mm-hmm. couldn't stop them at the dime like they can now. Mm-hmm. Give you nine cents change. <laughs> but uh, then there was no police force either. Sure. I was going to mention, too, about trains and buses. Oh, now buses, yeah, trains. Well, I started peddling papers. When I started peddling papers, the Courier and Express were two different papers. Mm-hmm. And the train, I used to get them off the train down at the foot of Clinton Street, the depot mm-hmm. was there. Mm-hmm. Not the freight house, the depot. Right now, the depot, the, was, the depot was where? On this side of the tracks, right at the foot of, of Clinton Street. Right across from Big Steve's or in that area? Or right, what, directly. The, the, the Clinton Street run right into the depot. I see. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had a, an office in the middle with a telegraph operator and ticket agent, and then two waiting rooms, one on each end. Mm-hmm. And uh, we used to get the papers at 20 minutes to 7. There was a train each way mm-hmm. in the morning and a train each way at night. Mm-hmm. Passenger trains. Yeah. And Conductors got so he knew knew everybody and rode on it gradually, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, just like the, and then uh, the Courier and Express combined. At night there was two papers. There was a Buffalo Evening News and there was the Times. Mm. Then they used to bring the Democrat and Chronicle from Rochester too. Who who uh, the Times now? Which paper was that? Was that just a that was an independent paper. It was different. Yeah. And there was a, there were uh, what three papers? Four papers. Four about. papers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Daily papers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Times always had a front page was pink. <laughs> they now did they run the, the two tracks pretty uh, uh, steady? Oh yes, then? the trains going through all the time. Mm-hmm. And you get a it, once in a while they'd get a wreck over on the big four or the main line over mm-hmm. it goes down through Crittenden there. Right. And that would be closed, and they'd, they'd run the tra- trains from Rochester to Buffalo over this line, mm-hmm. the passenger train there. And I've seen the 20th century go down through here like blazes. <laughs> and uh, a lot of big freights used to go through here, a lot. Now, where, where did this, I know it, we went, it goes to Oakfield, and then... It went all the way to Rochester. But it, it, it branched off toward Batavia then, or what? No. no. Did it ever pick up the main line, or just... In Rochester. Oh. In Rochester. So where did that this line actually go, east? Rochester. Well, I mean, you know, I went to Oakfield and then. Yeah. It must have gone. Uh, Virgin, Elba. Wow. I see. Right down through there. Yeah. But it stayed away from this, like you saw, say, the main line over here. Yeah. Until it got yeah. to Rochester, probably. Yeah. Hmm. And, well, originally it was known as the West Shore Railroad. Right. And, uh, and I think it ran originally. It was, uh, like a spur off of the main line, and it was supposed to go to all the way down to New York on the west side of the river. Mm-hmm. So that's where it's got its name, West Shore Railroad. Now, now that's just my idea, yeah. but it may be different. Now, what about the peanut? Well, the peanut, I guess that one, I never knew too much about the peanut. Uh, it wasn't too busy a line. Right. It was just mainly freight, I would imagine. No, they had passenger trains. Oh, did they? Because I know people used to ride into Akron here from Pembroke. Right? Hmm. Well, that was that must have tapped into the the West Shore someplace over here. No, it crossed. It didn't. It cr- yeah. It crossed the, the, the junction up there, mm-hmm. and it went to Tonawanda. Oh, I see. Okay. And I think it started down in Canandaigua, down that way someplace. Hmm. Came, that... to, came to Batavia. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I didn't know how long a line it was. Oh, I could. Well, now at the uh, Centennial, they had a train on that, especially that was the last mm-hmm. train to go on that railroad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they went to Caledonia mm-hmm. and then came back to went to Tonawana and come back to Akron. Hmm. I know there was, I didn't go on it, but <clears throat> I know there was a train because they had a, a fake hold up and a whole bit up there, yeah, at the, yeah, at the old depot. At, at, at yeah, Pena. one where Clark Remsen's father worked, he was yeah. a ticket agent up there, was he? Yeah. I know we we used to play basketball in the 
Yeah. In the old uh, yeah. back room of it there. Yeah. It was right across well, the street. The, the, the Bloom uh, family lived right across the street. Yeah. Right across the tracks, I should say. Yeah. And. Pat Bloom? Yeah. That's, well, this was. Was it Carl? Oh, this Carl. Carl this, was, was a father. Yeah, this was. Uh, this is Carl's brother, was Pat. There. Oh, I see. He was more yeah. my age. But I can remember the viaduct. People yeah, don't know. Yeah, the old viaduct. They don't uh, go through there now today. And about the only. Comparison they have is the one over in Quitney. Yeah. It goes uh, on the other side of Quitney, headed yeah. toward Alder. Yeah. It's, it's comparable to it. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, Bert Turk lived right there, too. That's right. He did. Because yeah. we lived just down the street a little bit from him. Right next to the railroad, he did. Mm hmm. Yeah. Park is on the other side. Right. And Bill's still there. Well, Bill's father is well, Bill, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, now, the buses, you said there was a. Uh, a bus company. Charlie McClure? I'm trying to think of who it was. It had a, was it the Orange or something company? Was it, did he go from here to Lockport or something? That was McClure bus. Was that what it was? Yeah, Charlie McClure, and he got killed on that bus. And mm. His high speed trolley hit him. He was the only one on the bus, all thing got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, it was Blue Bus. I forgot if it was always Blue Bus or not. No, Rochester, Batavian Buffalo Bus, I think they called it first. Then they changed it to Blue Bus. Mm -hmm. Western New York Bus Lines. Mm -hmm. Well, Neil can tell you more about it. I can. Yeah, yeah he, was, <laughs> he was with my I can remember those Blue Buses. Boy, they were yellow and blue. Yeah. And they, well, they may have had different yeah. colors prior to that. What was it? Fagel? Was it one of the buses that they um, used to drive? Big Fagels. Yeah. Yeah, they had those, and they had the, the flexible. Flexible, those, those, yeah. were, well, those were later, I think. Mm -hmm, you're but right. The, uh, those were snub nose, mm -hmm. and uh, the Fagels had the engine in front. Right, right. And, uh, those are the real old ones. Yeah, and they used to haul kids from the Limerick school up there, up to the school. Hmm. In fact, they had a contract. Mm -hmm. Well, I was staying up to my brother's house, which is... Where Dr. Ulanoff lives now. Mm -hmm. We were staying up there one winter and taking care of the house for him. And uh, I used to ride that bus. I used to, they, I wasn't supposed to be, but I was. <laughs> they'd, I'd go out there and they'd pick me up, take me out into school. <laughs> the bus driver didn't care. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and, and I'd ride home with him, thank God. Oh boy, they used to get some pretty cold winters up there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, there were a few of those. <laughs> and it's breezy up there, right? Today. Yeah. Can you remember when Ruby Parker started her uh, contract with the school it was with uh, the buses? Ru Ruby, not Ruby. That wasn't Ruby? No. What the? Well, uh, her husband started it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a JP, Jake Parker. Mm -hmm. oh, it wasn't Ross Parker. It was his brother. I can't think of his name now. Isn't that? That makes me so mad. Yeah, this, these things happen. I, yeah. <laughs> but... He was a big, fat guy. Yeah. And he had a, they had a livery stable over there. Mm-hmm. Where the parking lot the fire hall is now, right next yeah. to the hotel. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got a bus. Oh, Juice Rubeck used to drive it. Mm-hmm. To haul the Indians. Mm-hmm. Then he got another bus. And uh, Frank Shepard had a bus. So I remember, Frank, kids remember Frank uh, drove. Yeah. And, uh, but the first bus the school had that I can remember was an old Studebaker bus. Mm. And the English teacher, a guy by the name of Jenkins, he used to drive it. Mm -hmm. What and year would that have been? Oh, gosh, that was around 1930. Mm. I know that 30, 30, maybe 31 for a long time the, the school only had two buses that I can remember and then it went on to like you say Frank Shepard yeah he drove Henry Holtz used to drive a bus mm -hmm. a Ford bus I, don't remember that. I think I think that belonged to school too mm. uh, but they had this old Studebaker and I think they bought that Ford mm -hmm. and then uh, then they got more of them mm -hmm. 
Morocco, I think that was about 1935. I know, I know they had those, those Brockways a long time. Yeah, oh. well, they had a lot of miles on those. Mm, I can imagine. They were good bus. Because they only had... 85 kids they could haul on that. 85 seats on was that. Was that what big, it was? I know it was... bus. I know it was a big bus. Yeah. And like you say, they... They probably wouldn't allow the bus today, much less... Oh, no, that would be illegal. Today. Much less a one-legged driver. A yeah, one-legged you know. driver, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like you say, he, he drove uh, good weather and bad. Yeah, he'd take it right downtown Buffalo, Niagara Falls, any place. Mm -hmm. No, I, I have another thing down here, swimming holes. How many oh. swimming holes were there in that area? Well, let's see. At least start up at the... Tank. We'll start up there. We used to call it tank up beyond Quinton Road. Oh, yeah. The water tower for the peanut was. Mm hmm. Then there was the falls. Then they used to come down to what we called twin trees. It was uh, two pine trees right next to each other. So it's called twin trees. Where would that be along Murder Creek? Oh, let's see. It would be up. Maybe just a little lower than that. Mm -hmm. That's a lake. Look towards the lake. And then we used to swim down under the trestle there some, not very much. The Blue Bottom was down further than that. The Blue Bottom was down back on where Cran's Coin mm -hmm. Laundry is, mm -hmm. right straight back. Mm -hmm. Then there was, we used to swim at Lewis Bridge. Yeah. That's a cat. Yeah, it's a cat. Yeah, speaking of, of the swimming holes, uh, were there... I know guys used to jump off the the dam down in New Park. Yeah. And jump, I, jump off the bridge. Yeah, we're off the bridge, right. Yeah. And in that little pie shape. I did. I got four I had four stitches to show it. I know that people you tell people that today and they'll say you're crazy. They didn't, we couldn't yeah, do we that. We were. <laughs> well but <laughs> they used to skate there too. Oh, the oh, hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Did, now did they did they rope off the, the lake at all or anything? They just you know, just uh, scrape it off ourselves. I mean, it's up further, so in case you know, it might have been no. some thin ice. Did it, did it freeze over that much? In the oh, yeah, time? it used to start and freeze, and it'd be there for two or three months. Mm -hmm. skate. You could skate anywhere, you didn't have oh, to worry yeah. about thin ice or anything. You never did. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there'd be two or three hundred people down there. At night. I, know, I know, and they had two big floodlights right on the bridge. You mm -hmm. could skate till midnight. That, uh, let's see, that wasn't County Park then, was it? No, it was no. the Village Park. Village. Yeah. They supplied the lights and the mm -hmm. electricity. Mm -hmm. We had to clean the lake ourselves. Yeah, right. And my brother went and bought a dozen snow shovels. We took them down there. Mm. And that's what we used to clean the lake with. Good thing. <laughs> well, what about the other bridge? Uh, not the bridge, but the, the falls up behind... No, Falkirk. Yeah. Where did any? I know there's a bunch of rocks on it. People never go off that, did they? Oh yeah. They did. Yeah, sure. They used to dive off the top. It was deep enough. Oh Lord, yes. You, but you had to know where you had to hit. <laughs> you had to know it. Oh. Um, well, they they told me that there was a uh, a tree there that up on the top of the bank. The guys just climb up in that tree and jump in, mm. and. uh one of them was his name was Morel Tinkham. He's called Yike Yike Tinkham. That uh, Cortland Cope's uh, grand uncle he would be. He'd be uh, Barb Cope's grand uncle. Mm -hmm. That's who he'd be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. her her father's brother would be her uncle and and Court Cortland Cope's grand great uncle. That's it. How deep was that pool up there? I never was down to bottom. I don't oh. know. They, they've had to fish a few out of it. Yeah, I know. The, the guys have gone over and they hit the, I guess, hit the rocks down there. Yeah. And yeah, you had to know where you were going. Well, it was the same way in Indian Falls. You had to know where you were doing. Yeah, I heard that too. I, yeah. I never uh, seen that over there. Yeah, but, I used to swim there a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, dive right out of the mill. How much of a drop was that? 53 feet to the water. Are you kidding I didn't dive out of the mill, believe me. <laughs> we changed our clothes up there, but there was a lot of guys that did. Clark Remsen used to do it all the time. Mm. Uh, but we never used to climb down the water, dive off the top of the falls. Mm -hmm. the water. Mm. 
But like I said, you had to know where you were diving. Mm -hmm. A lot of people over there, they uh, didn't know what they were doing when they went in there swimming. That's where they lost their lives. I think that's what happens up here quite often where people do go in. They'll be from Buffalo or something. Yeah. And they come out and yeah. have no idea. Yeah. They try to walk across the falls. Now, that's yeah. not too yeah. Well, right up above the falls there, there used to be a trestle there. Mm-hmm. The railroad went across it. Mm-hmm. Well, that was before my time, too. Yeah. <laughs> that's when the Falkirk was the cement capital of the world. Mm-hmm. Had those kilns across there, and they used to used to go with the peanut, I guess. I know that there's a little red staple that told me about the the one that went across. I guess it came across what is a park lake now, and it crossed and went right right down past the uh, school. You know, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean by Fenton's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All right. Uh, there used to uh, Irwin Bates, Irwin Brucker told me about that. He says that. They used to push cars across there, but they didn't. He didn't. It was an old wooden trestle, mm-hmm. and he said he doesn't ever remember of them putting a, tr- a locomotive across. They didn't trust it. No, they didn't trust it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but that spur used to go right across and go down, hook onto the west shore. Because uh, when we were kids, they used to have uh, those tracks used to come all the way up to almost to Fenton's, mm-hmm. and there was a work car there. It was just a wouldn't frame it with two with axle, two axles and four wheels, of course. Mm-hmm. And we used to push that way up there by fence, and we'd start and give it a good push and jump on. We'd ride that thing right down across John Street, down by the school, right across Bloomingdale, down by the button shop, out to the West Shore Railroad. <laughs> then we'd have to push it all the way back. And then we'd really be going by the time we'd hit... Uh, Bloomingdale, it was just the good luck of God that there never was a car coming. No, no handbrake or anything? Oh, there? no, no brakes, nothing. Oh. Only way you could slow it down, we'd take a board and pull it across a cross member and up against the wheel. <laughs> Only way you could slow it down. <laughs> and then there was uh, switches up there uh, at the end of May, uh, on the end of John Street. They switch and go back to that crusher that used to be back there. Mm-hmm. Carl Gifford built a boat up in that crusher one time where they used to well there'd be bends with a rock in it up above and they'd back the coal cars under it and drop the stone stone into the uh, cars Hmm. and uh, that's where he built the boat he closed it in and built his boat in there and then on a flat car and they took it out down through there. How big a boat was it? It was a cabin cruiser. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a long time ago. When they built the high school, they used to bring the brick in on a railroad there on that spur. Hmm. That's the last time I ever knew it was to be used. Darn. How long did it take them to build that school? Oh, two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big project. I could it? imagine it was. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. It's a big project. They, they, uh, you say they use that spur to bring the brick in? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see if there's anything else I need. Well, I was, I, Ned, now the other night they mentioned a, it's more or less history about a ball diamond at, uh, Franklin and Pearl. Now, I would imagine that'd be, before be, my time. It wouldn't be where the cemetery was. But no. For, Franklin and Pearl. Is I've, I've heard my mother tell about it. There used to be a, she said there was a board fence right along the back of our lot when we lived on Marshall Street there. Hmm. There was a, the uh, ball diamond must have been where all those Pearl Street is. Well, those houses on Pearl Street. Ruby and uh, Ruby Paxton mentioned it. Yeah. That there was a ball diamond. They there. had some good games there, I guess. Mm-hmm. And she mentioned about what I didn't realize was where the first post office was. It was down in the old candy kitchen. Is that where it was? Yeah, John Panagakis. Well, oh, I didn't know the that. The post office was on one side and he was on the other, oh. according to her. Well, I, that's quite possible. And then it, when I was first remembered, it was up here uh, where that uh, 
Risley store, mm-hmm. that, that other store is what is it? The, well, the Grange Hall used right, to be. It, it was the Grange Hall, and well, uh, do you know that where that building is? Up in the top, there was a block. It said King's Block in it. Mm-hmm. That was Bob King that built that. It was a Nickelodeon theater. That's where the theater was. That's where the theater was. I know there was another Mrs. theater down. I I thought it was across the street, but you're right. That, that's because Mrs. King told me she used to sell tickets there. Mm-hmm. Bob King's mother, this and was young Bob's mother. Right. And his sister used to she sing sing there or play the. No, no, she. I don't know if she was even born there. Yeah. yeah. Well, someone someone there. Maybe Annalee Parker. Mm-hmm. It was. Uh, Mr. King's first wife's mm-hmm. child, and maybe she worked in there too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But when I first I can remember was uh, was in there that they didn't have any village delivery then. Mm-hmm. And everybody had a box. You could go in there any time during the day or night and get your mail. Yeah, yeah. I, I can remember the the post office there. Uh, Gosh, the mail used to come in on the train. Frank Shepard would haul it up to the post office. <laughs> and then to where the bank is now, there was a little building there. Mm-hmm. That's where my dad worked. It was Frank Stages. Oh, he had an insurance business and real estate business. And, and then a lot of the stuff, uh, packages and stuff that the parcel weren't parcel post would come mm-hmm. by express. Mm-hmm. American Express, and that's where they went. They took them down there, and he they held them. People go there and pick them up. Was the uh, such a thing as Railway Express then too? American Railway Express. Yeah, Company. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Now you you mentioned this theater. Uh, what year would that have been? Oh gosh, that before my time. Before, but did you? I don't remember. Oh, I see. The post office was always there. Mm-hmm. And then there was a guy by the name of Ford on the other side of the building. He had uh, an undertaker and paint store, mm-hmm. and like Ross had, mm-hmm. where Ross's was. Mm-hmm. And it was Ford. And then, and then Jim Shad took it over. Mm-hmm. Same business. I see. And then, uh, then uh, Ross's. Yeah, she was telling me, speaking of that theater, she mentioned in her tapes that, that uh, Nick Bailey uh, used to play up there. I think they didn't have any, you know, yeah. it wasn't sound then. Oh, no, oh, no. And it was something about Irene, Irene Sherwood played the piano. That's quite possible. And and Nick uh, Nick would play, and that was her that musical, was a musical good. entertainment, I guess. Yeah, go along with the silent movies. Mm-hmm. When they then they had another theater, of course, over where uh, on Clinton Street there, but that where they used to play basketball, mm-hmm. and, and that was a roller rink at one time too. I didn't know that. Yes, my dad always used to call it the rink. Hmm. My dad told me about going skating in there. Yeah, he, that was around. Well, he first came here was eighteen ninety five. He came to Akron, mm-hmm. and uh, he told me about roller skating there. There. I didn't know that we had a beautiful maple floor, you know. Mm. That was a nice, a real nice dance floor. Mm-hmm. They had roller skating and dancing in there, and then they'd have plays in there. It was the, well, that's where they always had all the uh, plays and these traveling troops that used to come around. Mm-hmm. They'd play in there. And uh, the school board always had their annual school meetings in there every year. The social meeting place. Yeah, yeah. It was this? Uh, it was the entertainment part of the whole village. Well, I know entertainment had been kind of sparse in those days. You did you made what you the, what, the best of what you had, I guess, more than anything. Yeah, and then uh, for the hotel Akron, is they used to have a big dance hall in there upstairs. Hmm. So my mother told me, and then over where the doctor's office is now. That was a hotel there, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guy Benimo. I think she said his name was Wells. But, uh, some relation to the Wells Fargo guy. Mm-hmm. He had that hotel there, and he had a dance hall in there, too. 
<laughs> it's supposed to have been a, a Bitterman's uh, tavern at the oh, end of that, yeah, that's, at the end of Main Street. Yeah, down there where that four apartments are now. Mm-hmm. Pop and Mandy Bitterman ran it when I was a kid. Hmm. That's and I don't know if you remember Doc Bitterman. The the dry goods. Well, he yeah, yeah, sheep, yeah. His sheep. mother and father. He ran it, and Doc ran it for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And then he he ran the bowling alley for a while too. I didn't know that. Yeah, I used to stick pins for him too. And which bowling alley is that now? That the one on the Main Street there, where the pizza place is now. Oh. And he he I guess he got he got it before uh, he had it before Kelly got it. Because I didn't know that that was uh, well. There you go. Uh, that, that was there beforehand. Oh I, yeah, a long time. Mm. You know, bowling alleys are ever since I know they first. They only had two alleys to begin with. A guy uh, during prohibition, uh, which they uh, had a pool room in the front, and bowling alleys in the front, and the back, and then they had a booze on the side. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I was allowed in those places. Well, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> but no, I, I had, uh, I didn't know that the, that, uh, a guy by the name of Casper Mado- Madonna run it. Was he the, he the one that he first that, started? Or? No, 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 no. Sport guy, the guy before that, his name was Sport Kriegel used to run it before him. Hmm. But, uh, the, you I, don't know that was the, before my time. Yeah, you don't know if he was the first one or not. I know. No. Because um, I can remember that show where, Used to bowl down there, mm-hmm. and when I saw him bowl, he was a real old man. He could still knock the maples pretty good. You know, speaking of uh, buildings, it, this came up in discussion about well, what was Pete Maz's old bar at yeah. one time, and apparently before he got it, yeah, uh, it's some Joe somewhere Kearney? well somewhere along the line. There was a, the entrance was in the middle of that building. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you remember when that was? Yeah, Pete Mather had it. Yeah. He had it then. But there was a, uh, the and door it was. Was it indented? The door, yeah, the, the door, is, as I know, in recent years, has always been up on the one end. Yeah, 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 that's but, right. But apparently when they remodeled, when it was taken over recently, they took all the, everything out of the inside and the studs were there. They could see where there had been a doorway in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah. And somebody apparently has got a picture of it. But I, this has got to be quite a way. Of course, that, in, in that building where the candy company is now, that wasn't there. Mm. Oh, Henry's. You Henry's, mean. yeah, mm-hmm. Henry's. That wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Pete Massa built that. Mm. Yeah, meat market in there. And then the bank wasn't there. Mm-hmm. I can remember when the bank was built. John Raish dug the basement for it. It was okay. four stills, big shell. He was a shovel operator. Mm-hmm. That's Clara Raish's father. Oh. Okay. He was a good show operator. Mm-hmm. When was that built? Well, I would imagine around 26. I can't remember exactly, but I, I would think it was around right about that time. I know I'd, I'd heard, you know, various uh, descriptions. Now, here's, here's something we haven't gotten to. Uh, Fourth of July's celebrations... In years past, as compared to now, I imagine they were pretty, pretty oh. lavish as compared to what we have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, of course, they were accrued to a certain extent compared to what they have today, mm-hmm. naturally. But they had always had a good parade. Everybody, a lot of, mostly all vocal stuff people and stuff like that, and then uh, they'd have games and eat stands. And, Fireworks always had fireworks every Fourth of July and Labor Day. I can remember John Panacakis having his own fireworks down in the corner. I don't know if you you ever saw it or not. Mm-hmm. They had it was his little thing, mm-hmm. and he used to set them off right across the street over there in well, with Flint's old Chevrolet garage there, oh. right on the corner. Of course, it was a big empty lot then. Oh, and well, over the, and, it wasn't empty though when I was a kid. Mm, no. Imagine it was. What, what there was, was a, a there was a restaurant on one side and a print shop on the other. Hmm. And uh, the print shop was where they printed the Akron Journal. And a guy by the name of Murphy ran it, and he lived in that house where uh, 
Kenny Parker lives now, right next to Dr. Ewing's office, mm -hmm. that double house. Mm -hmm. He lived in there. Mm. And uh, then there was a guy by, well, there were different ones who ran the restaurant. One guy, about the earliest I can remember, his name was Blue. What name? Uh, he was George Campbell's brother in law. I don't know what happened to that. Yeah. Who, who was in there? Well, they tell a story about that. There was a woman who run it. And you know Tuck, how he talked, Tucker. Mm -hmm. Well, she talked the same way. Hmm. And when Tucker came to town, he innocent as all out, doors, you know, and he went in there to get something to eat. And I guess she thought he was mimicking her. Oh. She chased him right up Main Street with a butcher knife. <laughs> Poor Tuck, he didn't know, he didn't know the difference sure, either. Sure, <laughs> That sure. would be an embarrassing <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they, um... Then one time, before Pete Mazza that ran that place there, uh, there was run by a guy who lived, an Irishman who lived up East Avenue. East Avenue used to be a, a lot of Irish people lived up there. And his name was Joe Carney. And, uh, well, Rosie had a, Rosie Ellis, he had a shoemaker shop there right on the alley. That's what he was, a shoemaker. Yeah, he was a shoemaker. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, the building is down on, right at the end of Franklin Street now, uh, across the road on Eckerson, right next to the parking lot, that house there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they moved it down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyhow, they had a whole raft of kids. Rosie Ellis and his wife had a whole raft of oh, that big family. And uh, but clean, oh my gosh, you know how gusty it is. And they, the whole family was like mm -hmm. that. Well, every spring they there was a little lot between that and the print shop, mm -hmm. and they used to have a garden in it, and a little garden in there. And in the spring they'd bring all their bed clothing out there. Eric, well, this doggone Joe Carney, he was always pulling some kind of a gag anyhow. And he, a junkie came along with a wagon, you know, horse and wagon. And that guy, darn Joe, sold him that stuff in the, the Rosie's uh, beds and stuff. And the guy <laughs> loaded on the wagon and Rosie come out. <laughs> he was better and all. <laughs> And, and the guy told you, he sold it to me, he sold it to me. And the guy says, God damn it, you Joe Karn. <laughs> oh, really they, to, they were always pulling something on poor old Rosie. Yeah. But Irving Brecker told me this too, that people in the Baptist church, the ladies, they were trying to get a mile of pennies for some project they wanted. Mm -hmm. And... uh well, my little penny's a lot of pennies, you know. It sure is. He says one morning, early in the morning, it was a Sunday morning, I guess, before there was any church you going, they were a rat come to a mother's door. This is Gus Brucker's wife. And they lived up on uh, Washington Street. And she, they went to the door. And there was Joe Carney he had a great big bag. All full of pennies. He said, here, this will help you get your mile of pennies. Well, of course, he was, wasn't was a Baptist. <laughs> Didn't make any difference to him, though. And that's just how a good-hearted guy he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he was quite a guy, I guess, Joe Carney. <laughs> Some of the stuff he used to pull, oh, it was really ripe, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, they think they do fool things here today. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was just right with them. <laughs> I know I heard that story about uh, Sandpaper Brown. And he he was quite a bike rider, right? Oh guess. yeah, he was quite a good and bike rider. I I'd, I'd heard the story, but I it's immaterial. About he and Pooch Cranes and a couple others, they wanted to see who was which was the fastest, I guess. They started on Main Street, one went up Bloomingdale and the other one up East Avenue. Yeah. Do you do you recall yeah, that story? I've heard of it. Yeah, I heard it, yeah. I they never did. They were supposed to go out and go around the main road and come down Buell Street. Mm -hmm. Well, that dog on Crancy cut across the Skyline Drive. Yeah, the old ledge road. <laughs> yeah, he beat him. 
tell you something about sand, uh, you talk about sand paper there mm -hmm. and his bicycle ride bike riding that's motorcycle right and uh big difference yes well they had a over the batavia fair they had the fairgrounds was where the racetrack is now and they had a big motorcycle meet there and they were going to have a race a cross-country race and uh, brownie went over to get in it they thought they wouldn't let him in because he wasn't from genesee county mm -hmm. so Moose says, let me ride anything. I don't care about whether I get prizes or anything. He's just let me ride. So he says, okay, you can ride. And they had to take two laps around the track and then go out and ride around the perimeter of uh, Genesee County, and then come back and take two laps around the track. Well, Brownie come back, and he took the two laps around the track, standing up on his seat, the first one in there. <laughs> there wasn't anybody in. He was all done already. <laughs> That's how fast he used to ride. And in his later years, he used to uh, ride to Daytona. Uh, yeah, and and he'd, he'd ride up into uh, Vermont mm -hmm. for motorcycle races. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw him one time down there in, in Pete Hess's driveway, which was made out of screenings. Mm -hmm. It's in that blacktop. Mm -hmm. And it was a dry summer's day. <laughs> Brownie cramped the wheel as far as, to the left as far as you could go, no, to the right, as far as he could turn it. He'd take on that thing and he'd spin that back wheel right around the front one. And uh, when he got through, you couldn't see him because of the dust. When he got through, it was a perfect circle right around there where he spun that bike around on that. <laughs> he didn't have to clean up afterwards, did he? Or no, no, he no, that was my job. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were speaking of racetracks. Uh, I was trying to remember when Brant's had their track down there. How oh, when they opened that? That was in the mid thirties, I think. Mm. Yeah, because I know I was working at Pete's, and I didn't start working for Pete until nineteen thirty-five. I think it was thirty-six something there. Because so, uh, I used to see him. I had to work on Sunday morning sometimes, and they. Geez, it'd be cars would be going by there all the time, going off the racetrack. Then at night when they come back, oh, what a traffic jam. You can imagine. Especially when for the train coming. <laughs> I uh, I remember they used to race, what was it? They used to race the 4th of July or was it Labor Day? I can't remember. Oh, they used to have three or four races during the summer. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Shoemaker used to drive down there. He used to mm -hmm. race down there. He had a race car made out of a Model T. Mm -hmm. He was a pretty good driver. Yeah, yeah he was. He drove, uh, he drove a long time. Yeah. But I, well, it's, uh, I guess there's a barn sitting right in the middle of that track now, down there. That could be. Yeah. I I haven't been in down there since we started racing. Mm hmm You know, they used to spin out and go up over the, straw, the hay bales at the <laughs> end. <laughs> the dirt track. Yeah. They used to, what, they used to oil it, I guess? Yeah, they used to put calcium chloride to, uh. Settle the dust. Mm hmm. Hmm. Old Speed was quite a character. Well, there, there were two uh, two brothers, weren't there? The Brown yeah. brothers? Uh, the only one I, I can't remember the other guy's name, but there was Speed. Was one kid, what guy was. He worked up to Curtis. Mm hmm. It, and I, I, like I say, I was a kid then. And I remember the. I had went, gone down a couple times. Uh, as a boy, yeah, to watch watch him, him race. But yeah, me other too. than that, I hadn't uh, had a chance to go down much after that. But they say you can still tell where the racetrack was. I believe. Well, not unlike this place out here on Jackson Street. That oh yeah, track. yeah, where they used to Floyd Flint used to train his horses. Was that who it was? Yeah, Floyd Flint. I know he that. owned that farm where Lawrence lived. Mm -hmm. He was a horse trader. Mm hmm That's where he used to work his horses out up there. Yeah, he, man, like I say, you go by there, and if, if you, now that we know it was there, you can yeah. see where. Yeah, you can see where. Especially in the back. Yeah. Where, where the, the, they had a ball the, diamond there one time, too. They did? Oh, yeah. Town team used to play up there all the time. No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Dean Gibson, a bunch of guys. What what end of it was? Was it on? Up on this end. Way up at this end. 
Mm-hmm. Right back of those hoses on the I know, okay. Yeah, I probably... The home plate was up towards the woods, up in that corner. Mm-hmm. Be the northeast corner of it. Mm-hmm. What was it? Made of, what was a pretty good ball then? Yeah, I imagine it would have been. There's plenty of room. Yeah. Certainly. Lots more room than it was up the end of John Street. <laughs> or down here in the park. Down here in the park. Yeah, that's true. Now, there was an awful lot of... Well, there again, that was the thing that... It was a uh, summertime uh, recreation because yeah. there was nothing else to do. Yeah, didn't have television. Guys played played, played uh, baseball. They played, played baseball. That's right. There's an awful lot of that. Kelly, geez, I see. You remember Kelly playing? Well, there used to be a ball diamond down on Cedar Street too, down right back of uh, uh, coin that coin laundry. Hmm. Right I, back. When I was a little kid, I can remember going down. They had a grandstand and everything with a roof on it. That would, why? There was a guy by the name of Brick Ansel, you, I remember, used to play down. Hike Hoy used to play down there. Mm-hmm. My brother used to play down there. Brother Albert used to play down there. Well, that would be between uh, what is the laundry now and, and Murder Creek. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, Murder Creek was back quite a ways from And then there. that lake, was, of course, wouldn't have been there, obviously. Oh, no, there was no lake there. Yeah. Uh, that's, I don't know who's, who put that in there. Well, that was, but in other words, that wasn't always. Uh, but we know it was wetland down there then. Oh, no, no, no. Just a quick one down through there. That's mm. all. Didn't, well, it might have been a little wet in the spring, but not mm-hmm. much. Mm-hmm. There's woods down through there. And then they had that ball diamond. Mm-hmm. And then they, well, of course, I imagine there wouldn't. Uh, that, that makes me wonder about Murder Creek because now, well, in you know, years past, after they built the lake, then you had a pretty steady flow there of water. Yeah. And I wondered yeah. if that had something used to do with... to get low, too. Yeah, well, as it does today. Yeah. But I wonder if that had something to do with that area being wet down in there. No, I don't think so. Somebody mm. made that wetlands. Mm. I see. I think Kelsey Webster had something to do with that. I'm it's, yeah, it's possible. He, he was great for that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know that he'd, he'd uh, try to really... Well, they dry up some of that wetlands down there on uh, off of Lewis Road mm-hmm. by those houses. Mm-hmm. They couldn't. I guess the wetland wouldn't let them. I think that was the thing about that whole stretch through there. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, maybe some people had something to do with that to see that it was maintained as a wetland area. Yeah. Kelsey was very, he was uh, quite a sportsman. Mm hmm. He wanted to keep that as a wetland. That's probably what had a lot to do with it. You remember uh, much about Limerick and the the crusher up there, and that? Oh, or was that not not too much? Because I never got out there very much, but I do remember there was a nice, great, big old house up there mm-hmm. in that woods. Cummings. Cummings's house. Yeah, that was a real. I always thought it was a real nice house. I don't know why they ever tore it down. But it's gone. Mm-hmm. And you used to have to go between those two big cement, uh, two stone pillars on Cummings Road, and the driveway went back in there to it. Right. Yeah. I guess that was quite a quite a community one time. At, at oh, yeah, of, yeah, a lot of... a lot of activity up there. Oh, yeah, I guess so. As I remember, well, uh, burrs and, and uh, regals and stuff that lived up in there. Mm-hmm. Limerick there, I don't just wear, but mm-hmm. and then there was Rebel Vitches. Right. All right. lived they lived in company house. They had a whole community of company houses up there. So and, I was told. And speaking of company houses, there was a, quite a few of them on Bloomingdale too. Oh yes, there was a lot of them down there, all along front but, of the, where the jip was. That was both uh, sides of the road. That was certain tea. Certain tea. Well, yeah. before that it was best wall mm-hmm. and, and, oh, uh, can't think of well, did uh, when they come change things around down there? Did uh, were those houses moved and people bought them, or, or yeah. what was it? Yeah, there's three or four of them over on uh, Scotland Road. They're going for the below the airport. Mm-hmm. Those, those are all those are coming houses. Hmm. You know, I, I know they went somewhere, but I didn't yeah, know where they went. Some of them went over there. I know. Mm-hmm. Where else, what happened to the rest of them? I don't know. I don't. But up yeah. there at the old stone quarry, I can remember that. Uh, 
uh, was a kid. The guy that was superintendent up there lived up on John and Marshall, Hawthorne, Don Hawthorne. Mm. And that house that I guess a guy by the name of Smith lives in there now, in the corner of there. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the... When I was a kid, that was Frank Stage lived there. Mm -hmm. He yeah. had something to do with the bank, didn't he? No, he Frank had. Stage? Uh, well, he might have been a, had something to do with the bank, but uh, he was the guy my dad worked for mm. in that corner of Clinton and uh, Monroe. Mm -hmm. And the bank was down where Friedman's store is. Mm -hmm. If you look up there, it says Wickwire National Bank up there. Right, right. It's still there. And, uh, but that was the Bank of Akron when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Bill Smith worked in there. and Cecil Shepard worked in there. Arthur Anderson worked in there. Arthur Berg worked in there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was another bank up there. Uh, the store just down from uh, Nick's Delicatessen. Mm -hmm. And that little store there, there's nothing in there right now. Uh, that was the bank, Tabor and Wolsey's bank. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady by the Nell, name of Nell Brown that worked in there. And I think she was some relation to Perry's, and I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Because she lived right at the end of Hart Street there where uh, Ruby Paxson used to live. Mm -hmm. That was Nell Brown's house when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she had a real deep voice. Hmm. <laughs> and Eddie Shepard used to say, anybody going to rob their store bank and no problem, say, wait, what? <laughs> Let's turn around and run the other way. <laughs> I imagine. But she was because she, I used to know her because she was a paper, one of my paper customers. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, she wasn't that way, of course. Mm -hmm. just, just a period rough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the whole town sure changed a lot since I was a kid. Well, I, I could imagine. Jeepers. I guess so. Although, the uh, first time I can remember, the first time I ever sat in a Santa Claus lap that I can remember was in the hardware store down in the basement. That which, was a department store then. Which yeah. hardware store was this now? McLaughlin's. Oh, okay. Okay. Down in the basement there. Hmm. Seisner says he can tell you, he can show you right where the Staircase used to go down. Hmm. Uh, they're in the floor. They filled it all in. Mm -hmm. uh, who ran that then? A guy by the name of Francis. <coughs> Francis Department Store. Hmm. And I guess a man by the name of Newton ran it before that. Mm -hmm. yeah, gee, I can remember start right down at the bottom of the main street to uh, Altenburg's. Right. And then was Clarence Parker was the guy who was the judge. Clarence, okay. Clarence. And, uh... But his, his wife's name wasn't Ruby. No, it wasn't Ruby. Mm -hmm. I can't think of it now. Sometime I'll think of it. Okay. And, uh... And then it was there, Altenburg's, and then there was a open lot. And then it was, uh... Uh... Parker's. And the American Hotel. And the fire company. And the village hall. And then the next place was the... They call it the Block Building. Uh, block Block, that's what they call it. And there was a guy by the name of Blount run a furniture store there. And the next place up was E.J. Soul. Mm -hmm. Dry goods store and general merchandise. And then the next place up was a hardware store. From the guy, is it? No, 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 no. Before uh, that. Yeah. Uh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There was something else in there. Blocks. And then there was another store. What the heck store? I can't think of what was in there. Yeah. Then the next place was where the hardware store was. A guy by the name of Zimmerman ran it. And then Jack Bessel had it. Then there was Charlie Handy's barber shop. Mm -hmm. Then this Francis Drygood store. And then and then Eddie Brown had it for a car agency, that that same dry goods store, before it was a plumbing store. What kind of cars did he sell? He sold Willie's, Overland, Willie's Knights, mm -hmm. Overland's. Mm -hmm. And he and Henry Dye. 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, the next place was a A&P store. Right. And then next was Ed Stabell's butcher shop. Hmm. Then there was another hardware store. Uh, Johnny Eckerson's grandfather ran it with a, a, a guy by the name of Croft Hoy, Crawford Hoy. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a hardware store, and then they had, uh, well, you put there and pay your gas bills. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then the next store was a tailor shop, George Garnham Tailor Shop. And then there was Gene Haven's Barber Shop, where Al is now. And uh, next door up was a Larkin store. This uh, this time period was what? Oh, this is down in, back in the twenties. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm trying to think, of, there was a market basket store in there too. Yeah, I remember that. George, but that was later. George Edgar ran right. mm-hmm. it. There was a there was another store. Then there was a Bob Robinson store, and then. Uh, there was a farm uh, drugstore. Uh, there was Stones, Stones mm-hmm. Drugstore. Mm-hmm. Before him, it was Hillegas. Hmm. And then there was a Tinney's Variety Store. Yeah. And before him was uh, a store. Then there was a Hank Egan, a guy by the name of Henry Egan, had a dry goods store. Dry goods. Mm-hmm. My mind got foggy on what was on the, up after that. Mrs. Kane and her son ran a, a restaurant. Yeah, that was that long, narrow Yeah, a diner. long, narrow yeah. one, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was another restaurant. Somebody else ran it before they did. Mm-hmm. And Eddie Bitterman had a cigar store uh, right next to Good and Plenty. Mm-hmm. Where Good and Plenty is now. He was right. the next door down was Eddie Bitterman had a tobacco store mm-hmm. and sporting goods and stuff. Mm-hmm. Then there was where the Good and Plenty is was uh, there's Ed Buckley. Had a grocery store in there. Mm-hmm. Sold shoes, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, and down where uh, Jerry's TV is, there was a undertaking parlor, or undertaking place, and a furniture store there. Mm-hmm. Well, didn't one of the Shads have an under, undertaking? That's across the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, this one, when I was a kid, it was first to remember, anyhow, a guy by the name of Carl Gifford ran it. Mm-hmm. And then it was... Graves and Gifford, and then, then it was Mills, mm. Graves and Mills, mm-hmm. and just plain Mills, mm-hmm. and then that's when it burned. Was that the, did that Graves uh, move to uh, Clarence? Yeah, yeah, okay. Fay Graves, was it? Fay Graves, yeah. yeah. Right. I'd heard the name. I yeah. Well, then up above, uh, up above Mary's. That little sto- little place that was in the end, I can't remember what was in there. But the next store up where the nationwide is now was uh, Buckshot's father and his brother ran a hardware store in there. Hmm. And then then Mills went in there. Mm-hmm. Jewelry. Mm-hmm. And furniture. And then uh, the next place, of course, was that Tabor and Wolsey's Bank. Right. Then the next door was uh, Bert Hitchcock. He uh, he took care of the papers. He sold all the papers and uh, magazines mm-hmm. and, and penny candies and school supplies, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. 
And then the next place up was a bakery, Billy Gross. Let's see, that would be now about where the liquor store is in that no, area? No, it's below no. that. Below that. Uh, where that beauty shop is. Oh, okay. The the one that, uh, yeah, right next to Niggs, you mean? Yeah, no. right next to Niggs. Okay. Then the next store up, there was Archie Higgins. They had a plumbing store in there for quite a while. And what? Oh, and then they made it into a barber shop. Mm. San Gisabo or somebody. Right in that name. <clears throat> And the guy had a shoemaker shop up there too. And then up where the liquor store now is, there was a guy had a SB Townsend, his name was. He had a old feed store and groceries and stuff mm-hmm. in there. And the next store was Leo George. Wow. Oh. And he had a shoes and groceries and fruit, yeah. fresh fruits and stuff like that. Townsend was more for seeds and feed and hmm. stuff like that. They must have had a lot of room in the back then, I would imagine, for their stock or not. No, there wasn't, no. It didn't have that big a, but he, later on, he, he built that place where the penny saver is. He had, he had a grocery store and a meat market there. Townsend, mm. Townsend did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, we would be right next to the, where the show was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. And then uh, the next place up, Doc Pringle had his office. Now, see, this, That's this. where Salvatore got his barbershop. Oh, okay, okay. And then, of course, that Sherwood. Right. <laughs> they, that Sherwood. Gosh, when did they come in there? Oh, God, I don't know. You've been there they, long before I can remember. <laughs> There's a thing in here, and I, I read Dunn. Right? Yeah. And they, they may, I didn't go through it all, but they mentioned it he, there. He came here originally, I heard, with a railroad. Mm-hmm. Quit the railroad and started that hardware store. I think I don't know whether he... Build it or what, or whether you bought somebody out or what. Mm. I should have brought it along because it it, uh, it was a conversation with Irene. Oh, that would well, have been interesting. That was about the the, the end of the business uh, district on yeah. that side of the street. Yeah, it is now too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the other side didn't didn't change. Well, I don't know. Well, oh, down the lower end, down lower.